Hi everyone, Sane Man here. This video is brought to you by a donation from Caesar Valentine Constantine, and here's what he has to say. Hi Sane Man, please accept this donation and my short film comedy for review. I think it's a funny take on what the world would look like if all the secrets behind marriage would be common knowledge. Well Caesar, thanks for your donation as well as your topic request. And I suggest that people watch your video first before they listen to the rest of what I have to say. It's the first link in the description. So that being said, your short film seems to be set in a weird world world where instead of men proposing marriage to women, they propose divorce instead. The goal of all marriages are not to find love and happiness, but instead to lead to a successful divorce, where the guy presumably gets destroyed by the divorce courts. The short film takes you through a number of short scenarios in what I assume is a local Spanish restaurant, and it kind of reminds me of something that you'd actually see in a bizarro world with regards to Seinfeld. The male characters are funny because the women are constantly shit-testing them to see how little they actually care for them. The male characters have to prove to their wives that they don't love them, and they will treat them poorly throughout their relationship and subsequent divorce. It's a world where actually having feelings for a person you love romantically is seen as wrong. Ironically, women don't seem to have the same feelings for us the same way that we have for them. Sure, they can become devastated when divorced or when they get dumped because their chances of finding a man that's as good enough as the one that left them are pretty slim, especially after they pass the age of 35. But for the most part, women don't love men the way that we love them. Ironically, at the end of the main course divorce film, one of the characters is speaking to his lawyer, and he mentions that he's in love with the woman, and he doesn't want to get a divorce. He says that society is taking the idea of marriage and making a business out of it, and that without the feeling of love in relationships, they're just a business and we might as well not bother. Personally, that's the way I see relationships now as well. I see them as an exchange of my time and resources and soul for sex and hugs. Every day that goes by, I'm actually less interested in intimacy and relationships. I've now pretty much gone into MGTOW monk mode for the last year now, and it feels pretty good. Because if she can't love you back and doesn't actually want to work together as a team instead of the CEO, then what's the point? In the main course divorce film, one of the lawyers sees that there's no hope for his client to get a divorce, so instead he asks for the check at the restaurant because he wants to do one of either two things. Number one, disrupt their train of thought so he can actually keep his job into the future. Or number two, the lawyer sees that his client is a complete waste of time, so he's never going to propose a divorce to his wife, so the lawyer needs to move on to a new client. Ironically, sometimes I feel that I could understand the position of the lawyer because, ironically, in my photography business last year, I shot weddings as well as doing work for family court lawyers. I take pictures of the happy couple, and then I take pictures of the happy lawyers and judges that finalize their divorces. For some reason, the divorce lawyers that hire me are also incredibly cheap. At least the happy couples have no issue paying me, but when it comes to lawyers, they're always trying to get more than their fair share. I guess that's what makes them good lawyers. Caesar, when I first started watching your film, it kind of reminded me of another full-length feature film called The Invention of Lying from 2009, with Ricky Gervais and Jennifer Garner. In that film, people in society haven't learned to lie, and when couples in the film are incredibly honest with one another, it makes me think of that particular film. Maybe if you're going to film a follow-up film, you could actually write a script where the happy couples get married, and then they time travel or basically fast-forward instantly to their divorce, where their divorce lawyers tell them how the marriage went, and what each of them is going to get after that particular divorce. Perhaps you can change it to where the wife tells the husband all the bad things she's vowing to do to him with regards to her wedding vows, and basically overpower the things that he says. Have her say that she's going to leave him for his more successful best friend, and then have him respond by saying that he's going to leave the toilet seat down for the entire duration of the marriage. Then watch as she loses her mind and slaps him in shock because he left the toilet seat down. But when she finally tells him about her future cheating, he doesn't respond to that with shock and horror. Another really interesting thing from your short film, Caesar, is that after a divorce, women do get happy to the point where they throw divorce parties. Why wouldn't women be happy if they actually get to keep all the assets, the children, and financially their life is usually much better off? They get a new chance at love and life, and the guy often spends his life living out of a suitcase in a boarding house or living out of his car. Your film is only 9 minutes long, and once again, I hope that everyone checks it out. I don't want to spend the rest of this video discussing the same things and going around in circles, and beating a dead horse. So instead I want to change the topic a bit to why men actually get divorced or leave their long-term spouses. I know that the vast majority of guys get left behind by women, with roughly 70% of divorces initiated by chicks, but what brings the 30% of men to leave in the first place? even when they actually have kids. Something I've started noticing about Eastern European men, myself included, is that once we reach around the age of 35 and up, 
we basically have what I'd consider a midlife crisis or awakening because we start to think with our big head. Because of that, we start to question where our relationship is going and if we're happy with our partners or not. We begin to reflect on our accomplishments and our regrets. At this point, many guys look at their mid-30s wife and sexually she's no longer appealing and probably won't be having any kids anymore. So we start looking at women in their 20s. Perhaps we fall out of love because our partner doesn't share the same values as us anymore. Or perhaps they aren't interested in us sexually anymore either. We are unhappy so we might try to monkey branch to a higher quality woman with regards to youth and beauty. Women generally monkey branch any chance they get at basically any age. But it's the midlife awakening for men where we actually try to monkey branch to other women, especially if we're serial monogamists. Many women often complain that guys trade up to younger women when they hit the age of 35 to 40. But the truth is, guys aren't simply trading up, they're actually unhappy, and they believe that changing their relationship partner for someone more compatible will probably do them some good. My father left his first wife around the age of 35. He says he left her because she didn't want kids. That's the reason I also left my ex as well. I couldn't believe how similar the situations were with regards to the timing. I also have female cousins that were left by their husbands when those guys turned around 35 to 40 years of age. Even one of my uncles had a first family and then a second one later on in his 50s and 60s. Many men have this option to basically have a second family because we often keep our looks longer and our value is often tied to our utility value as a plow horse. If the plow horse leaves the building and never returns, there isn't much the woman can do about it. In my own case, I gave myself time and put effort into trying to make my partner see my point of view and work towards staying together and having a life together. I couldn't just flat out come and say that if you don't make changes A, B, C, and D, I'm leaving you. I was supportive and gave her many good options like giving her my car if she wanted it, all she had to do was get her license, as well as moving into a house together so we could presumably have a family together. She chose not to follow my lead and instead wanted to stay in the place that she was at and I don't think she saw or basically cared that I was unhappy. She was focused on her own career and happiness instead. I was focused on trying to make her life better as well as my own. I wanted us both to be happy. I didn't date anyone or try to monkey branch while I was in my relationship either. I gave it about six months to a year to try and influence her and see where things went, but at the end of that time I expected to maybe see some progress on a few things, but instead I saw things getting worse and worse, and eventually deteriorating. So I pulled the plug and I was incredibly happy to do so, because all the stress basically disappeared overnight. After almost ten years it was like a divorce for me. I had a huge hole in my heart, but ironically I filled it with the red pill rage for about a year and a half, after I stopped dating her, and I remained single for that entire time. I didn't need love for that particular period of time either. I had my channel and my anger to get me through everything. But once I got through the red pill rage in the early part of 2015, that hole in my heart reappeared and I started dating again. So I spent 2015 in a couple of relationships and realized that by the end of 2015 that I was pretty much done dating. My desire seems to have completely disappeared and I've got more important things to do now. I have a complete sense of apathy for love and a sense of disgust, thinking about actually having to deal with relationships and women in general. The best case scenario is like living like a brother and sister in a relationship where you're constantly putting a woman in her place because of constant shit testing. My father and brother appear to be both doing that successfully and both have successful marriages or the best possible under the circumstances. For me, on the other hand, I can't do that because if I get together with a woman, I love her too much and I basically find that I can either put my love into a woman or I can put it into my work, but I can't do it in both. Tesla made the same observation in his own life that he can actually put his passion 100% into a relationship or all of his passion into his work. It was one or the other. Otherwise, they'd probably get done half-assed. I did everything that my ex-partner asked me over 10 years to improve myself, but when I asked her to improve herself, all I got was vaginal farts and crickets, so I had to exit stage left. Men also choose to divorce because they're unhappy, but less of them do so because they know that they'll lose financially so they stay in cheaper to keeper relationships. Women stay in their unhappy marriages and relationships because they make a man a project or they figure out that he's the best that they can do, so there's no reason for them to monkey branch to someone else. Now that I think of it, there's actually one relationship dynamic that's better than constantly fighting off shit tests, and that's one where both you and your partner are walking on emotional eggshells around each other all the time. You don't want to disturb each other's emotional peace by doing something to offend or piss them off. That's what I had for 10 years. 
It's like two social justice warriors living together in a politically correct relationship. So long as you both didn't rock the boat, you could both get the sex and intimacy that you were looking for. So I guess I had a relationship that was better than I thought was ideal. But as I mentioned, she didn't actually want to move forward in life and seemed to be stuck in a behavioral loop, and the only thing she was focusing on or putting effort into was her own career. Ironically, my father dealt with a woman that pretty much did the same thing, and a woman that focused on her banking career back in the 70s instead of having a family. Funny how we end up becoming like our fathers if we aren't careful. I, on the other hand, won't be getting married at this point, even though he still thinks that I should. I guess he's forgetting how having a family is meant that he wasn't able to make many of the life choices that he wanted over the last 40 years. All of that because he had a family, and I can see that he has regrets. And I also mentioned I couldn't deal with the constant shit-testing of having a wife or relationship partner. It's so much easier to set my mind to other things and focus on them instead of loving a wife that's constantly trying to emotionally abuse me. Anyways, that's all I've got to say. Thanks again, Caesar, for your donation as well as your topic. Sorry I couldn't fill the full time and had to switch topics, but I'm sure you're fine with it because it still has to do with divorce. I know you don't change horses in midstream, but I just had to do it. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and check out the MGTOW mystery link. As for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the angry divorce gods away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.